I am Nurse Master Charlie and on my channel I talk about nursing, health, education, and music. Today's topic is on that of what is a hemoglobin A1C? Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you're new visiting, then welcome. Today's topic is on that of what is an A1C or what is a hemoglobin A1C and then how does an A1C work and then what is it used for? A lot of people are out there getting an A1C done. You see commercials for all these medications, specifically diabetes medications that are mentioning this can help you lower your A1C or this can do that for your A1C. So first off, what is hemoglobin? Now hemoglobin technically is a protein and it is a molecule that is found within red blood cells. And in a red blood cell, there's approximately 200 to 300 million hemoglobin molecules. What? It's actually what makes the red blood cell red. So your red blood cells, also known as your RBCs, are given their color from the hemoglobin. All right, the A1C part. I gotta put on my glasses for this, it's a little nerdy. But in about 1976, the New England Journal published an article by Dr. Koenig and his colleagues, and they had defined what a hemoglobin A1C is. Now in A1C, you have a hemoglobin, different types of hemoglobins. There's hemoglobin variant A, B, C, D, whatever. What they did is they found that hemoglobin A, subset 1C, is basically a hemoglobin molecule that was kind of weighed down. It was a little bit more heavier than the other types. And it was made heavier due to the sugar that is bound to that hemoglobin molecule. And hence we get the term hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin being the red blood cell, and then the A1C being the type of hemoglobin, and then specifically the type that sugar binds to or sticks to. All right, so now we know what hemoglobin is, and we know what A1C means, let's put that together. Now, a red blood cell on average lives about three months. Some books say two to three months, some books say three to four months. So we'll just say 90 days on average. Now that red blood cell is going to be floating around your bloodstream for 90 days. And sugar naturally is going to stick to that red blood cell. So when you have normal blood sugar, there's only so much blood sugar out there that's going to stick to that molecule. When you have double or triple you're going to get double or triple sugar molecules that are sticking to your hemoglobin. Let me show you an example. Let's pretend this is a red blood cell. It is kind of dark here. So in our red blood cell, we have hemoglobin molecules. So inside of our red blood cell, hemoglobin molecules. They're the ones that carry our oxygen, we'll say, our oxygen and our iron. Iron, for the medical world, is Fe. So, okay. So, now, a cell lives about 90 days. So within that 90 days, sugar is going to accumulate on that cell. So let's picture if this was a red blood cell, we took one out of a person's body, now sugar molecules, they stick to your cell like glue. So let's pretend these black marks, and these little X's, are sugar molecules. Let's say we are in January. So in January, somebody eats you know, some sugar throughout their month, and let's say their sugar is on average about 200. Okay, so we'll say 200 of their blood sugar. Now, let's say in February, it's Valentine's Day, so they have, cakes and cupcakes and cookies and ice cream and chocolates all the little chocolates that go with valentine's day and let's say their sugar hits a whopping 300 that much on average and then in march they realize oh shoot my sugar was high i'm gonna eat a little bit less sugar the problem is it still accumulates and let's say for that month 
their sugar was only about 200. So they were 200 in January, 300 in February, and back down to 200 on average in March. So when they do an A1C, they go see their doctor in April, for example. Their doctor says, hey, let's get an A1C on you. How have your blood sugars been? And let's say the patient says, well, I never really even test my sugar. And the doctor says, no worries, we're gonna get your A1C and see what your blood sugars look like anyways. So at this point, the lab is gonna analyze not just this one blood cell, but maybe a couple of other thousands of blood cells. And they're all gonna show about the same. Some are gonna have a 200 blood sugar on them, some are gonna have a 300, some are gonna have a 200. So when the machine's all done and it calculates, their average is gonna be about a 250 on average. And then it's gonna calculate that and turn it into a percent, and that is gonna be the A1C. All right, so when all is said and done, this is gonna be about a 10.5% as far as the A1C is concerned. All right, so what is a hemoglobin A1C or an A1C actually used for? A hemoglobin A1C is specifically used to diagnose diabetes. It can be used to diagnose type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, and in some cases, maybe even gestational diabetes. So how is an A1C used to diagnose diabetes? Well, like I said, there's a formula to figure out the percentage. But when somebody has a hemoglobin A1C or an A1C less than 5.7%, that is in the non-diabetes range. When you are between a 5.7 and a 6.4%, that is diagnosed as pre-diabetes. When a patient has a 6.5% or greater, that is a diagnosis of diabetes. Now besides diagnosis, an A1C can also be used to help manage a patient's medication regimen to see how they're using, utilizing their diet and how exercise is benefiting them. Because remember, it's over a three month period of time and a provider can use an A1C to adjust and modify a patient's medications, their insulins or their pill medication that can increase the doses. Um, so it kind of gives you an overall general picture over that three month period of time of how their blood sugars are doing. Because remember we said the sugar sticks to the cells. So if their sugars are high over that three month period of time, well then they need either a medication adjustment, a diet adjustment, an exercise adjustment, or all three of those factors. Once a patient is diagnosed with diabetes, to show that they have good control or that the medication is working or their diet is working or their exercise work is working or all of them are working, the goal is to have their A1C 7.0% or less. That's gonna show them some good control. Now, depending on a patient's age, as the patient gets a little more into their 70s or 80s or they have other comorbidities, morbidities, they have um, suffered heart attacks or strokes, the doctors may increase that rate to 8.0% depending on the patient. So controlling your A1C is very important. There are some, some studies that have shown that by dropping your A1C 1%, let's say you were a 10% and you dropped it to a 9%, well, the cardiovascular benefits, for example, your risk of heart attacks and strokes, decreases by approximately 14%. That's a big number. Now, you decrease your foot risk or foot complications by approximately 43%. That is a big drop. And for our kidneys, decreasing your A1C by 1% decreases your risk of kidney failure and ultimately leading to dialysis by 37%. That is a big drop. Now, for our eyes, dropping your A1C by 1% decreases your risk factors of having eye issues, ultimately leading to blindness by 19%. Now, I'm not saying that with diabetes, these are promised complications, but uncontrolled diabetes can lead to issues with your cardiovascular system, heart attacks, strokes, 
clots in your legs, for example. It can lead to issues with your feet, amputations, for example. It can lead to kidney failure, and it can lead to ultimately things like blindness. But controlling your blood sugar can help decrease those risks of those complications. Just like I said, by decreasing in 1% decreases all those complication risks by some huge numbers. So how often should you get your A1C tested? Now, for a pre-diabetic, if you've been diagnosed as pre-diabetic, you wanna get your A1C tested at least once a year. Now, type twos should get their A1C tested about every three to six months. So you're looking about two to four times a year because you wanna see what the therapy is doing. If your numbers are good, probably can get away with twice a year. Now, a type one probably wants to get their A1C tested about every three months. So you're looking about four times a year. And then what if you don't have diabetes? Well, they recommend that you be tested beginning at age because at that time in our life, you figure our metabolism slows down, maybe we're not as active, but that's where it becomes very important, especially if you have a desk job or you are a little more little on the sedentary side to kind of watch the diet, begin an exercise program, just for example, by walking. Now, if you have a family history of diabetes or you have other signs and symptoms of diabetes, then you might want to be tested sooner than that. So how accurate is an A1C? Generally, about 0.5% is its margin of error. So it's pretty dang good, um, of course, depending on the labs and the type of test. So what can affect an A1C? There's a lot of things that can alter the numbers for an A1C. For example, blood disorders. If you have anemia, um, sickle cell disease can change the way an A1C number is reported. So I'm going to list a couple of them here. There's a, there's a lot of different things that can affect how an A1C is reported. All right, so we talked about what an A1C is, how it works, and what it's used for. Let me share a couple of statistics of how prevalent diabetes actually is. Now, in the United States, there is about, in 2020, we had about 34.2 million people with type 2 diabetes and another 88 million with pre-diabetes. So as far as the diabetes, those patients are about one in 10 people in the United States has type two diabetes. Pre-diabetes, you're looking at about one in three people in the United States. Now across the world, the World Health Organization, check this out, in 1980, there was about 108 million people in the world who had diabetes. In 2014, that was the last statistic that they did, there was approximately 422 million people now with diabetes. In the United Kingdom, there is about 4.7 million people. With their population, that's about one in 10. In Canada, there's about three million people. You're looking at about one in three. Even though it's a smaller number, there's still about one in three, kind of like our United States, our pre-diabetics. And in Japan, they have about 10 million people with diabetes, which is about 12% of their total population. In Australia, there's about 1.2 million people, which is about 4.9, almost 5% of their total population. Now, China has over a billion people in there, in their, in their country. There's about 116 million people diagnosed with diabetes. So, those are some pretty staggering statistics. And it is also estimated by the World Health Organization that diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the world. So if you are over 40 years of age or a, are a part of a certain ethnicity or have genetic traits of diabetes or have a lack of exercise and a certain way of dieting or not dieting, I would recommend having an A1C done. The sooner you know, the better. That way you can take measures to help prevent either getting diabetes or getting um, pre-diabetes or going from pre-diabetes to having diabetes is always about prevention and diet and exercise along with medication are key because finding out the earlier the better decreases your overall risk 
of complications in the future. So remember to like this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, especially for more videos about nursing, about nursing, about nursing, <laughs> more about nursing, health, education, and music. I post videos about nursing, health, education, and music. And in the comments below, if you could leave me a comment about what is your A1C, if you know what it is. Until the next video, God bless and bye-bye.